All right, my friends, we're going to look at the three forms of quadratic equations and do a quick example. So one form is what's called standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. The value that's in this one is your c value will tell you straight away what the y-intercept is of that parabola. Another form is what's called the vertex form. And the value in this one is that these constants h and k are the x and y coordinates of your vertex. So that'll tell you where the either the minimum value is of the, uh, the parabola if it points upward um, or where the maximum occurs if it sort of opens downward. And finally, we have the factored form. And these values R1 and R2 are the roots of the equation. Uh, and it would show where, for instance, the graph crossed the x-axis if it were to have x-intercepts. So the roots are R1 and R2. So let's do a quick example of this. Uh, here is a function y equals x squared minus 6x plus 13. And we're going to find a whole bunch of things about this function. Um, well, the first thing to realize about the way that it's written is it's already in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So if you plug in x equals 0, you can see that you would just get y equals 13. So your y-intercept is right there at positive 13. So we could even put that in here on the graph with this little blue dot. Um, this is at um, 13. Each one of these vertical tick marks is actually worth 2. So you can see it goes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So there's our y-intercept. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing into vertex form. Um, that will typically involve completing the square. So let's do it. Um, well, what you do to complete the square, right, you look at this negative 6, the coefficient of the x. Uh, cut it in half to get negative 3 and then square it, and that would give you positive 9. So what we're going to do is we're going to add and subtract 9. And so these first three terms will form our perfect square of uh, x minus 3 um, quantity squared. And then left over, we would have negative 9 plus 13, which would give you positive 4. So here we are already in the vertex form. Um, so the vertex, well, is going to be hk. So x minus h quantity squared, well, h is 3, and then plus k, the k value is going to be 4. So now we know where the vertex is. So we can actually put that on our graph, too. That's going to be over 3 units um, and up 4. And remember, going up, each tick mark is worth 2. So that's why it's this purple dot right here. That's where the vertex is. So our vertex here is that hk equals over 3, up 4. In our vertex form, we already have here x minus 3 squared plus 4, so that's all good in vertex form. Well, if that's where the vertex is, then that's where the so-called axis of symmetry needs to be. The axis of symmetry will go right through the vertex. Um, so we know that the axis of symmetry is going to be right here at x equals 3. Turns out we also could have found it from this relationship negative b over 2a. So if you had negative, negative 6, that would be a 6 in the, in the numerator divided by 2 times 1. So 6 over 2 gives you 3. So x equals 3 is an axis of symmetry. So we should be able to go ahead and draw this thing in then if that's the vertex. And we know that it goes through this blue point here. So there's our parabola. It's up there. Um, well, now that we have the graph, we can tell a few things uh, about it. Um, so it's not going to cross this x-axis at all. It's not going to have any uh, real zeros. No real solutions. It's going to have imaginary solutions, which we'll see later if we use the quadratic formula. Um, we can also see that we have a minimum value at y equals 4. The parabola will never go lower than this. Everything's above y equals 4. As far as the domain, what you ask yourself is, what values am I allowed to plug in for x? Well, I could plug absolutely anything in for x. There's no restrictions on it. So this thing to the left and to the right could any values, any horizontal value, any value of x would be an acceptable input. So our domain is basically all real numbers. It goes from negative infinity to infinity. Um, the range, which we'll look at next, well, that's just the acceptable y values. And you can tell that that's going to be anything 4 and up. Um, so we're going to write it like this. You use the square bracket if you actually include the 4. So it's uh, 4 and anything above 4. So it goes all the way up to, up to infinity. 
So the final thing we have left is actually just to find the, the roots uh, of this thing, or um, the zeros, right? It's not going to have real solutions, but it'll have um, complex roots. And so we can find those with the quadratic formula. So negative b would be 6 plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And so if you plug those quantities in, this is what you'll get from the quadratic formula. And simplifying that a bit, you get 6 plus or minus root negative 16 over 2. Well, root negative 16 is just going to be 4i. So it's going to be 6 plus or minus 4i over 2. And then we can simplify this by, well, dividing the numerator by 2, or both terms in the numerator. So you'll get 3 plus or minus 2i. And those are our complex number solutions, um, or, or zeros of this, of this function. And so if we wanted to, it's not asked for here, but if you wanted to put it in factored form, um, you would have um, x minus one of the roots, so 3 plus 2i, and x minus the other root, or x minus the quantity of 3 minus 2i. So x minus root 1 and x minus root 2. And so then our roots here um, are going to be 3 plus or minus 2i. And hopefully that helps you to see all these little parts of parabolas and how to write them in different forms.